Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best chair. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Oh, my back hurts. Ah, oh, buddy, I know. I feel you. It's nice to just rest these weary bones. What do you rest your weary bones in, Hal? What are you resting them in right now? This is a Staples gamer chair, and I bought it at the beginning of the pandemic. Where I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know how long I'm going to be working from home. I'm going to get a chair that's comfortable. These look like they're real comfortable. They've got like the high headrest, so I can sort of mm-hmm. sit back there. Lumbar support seems good. I got like a pad. That does the circular massaging and stuff. I was like, this is going to be oh, like an electronic, like, yeah, yeah, that has like the shiatsu, like, and I'll tell you, first of all, that, that was gone in like three weeks. Mm -hmm. No, this is actually painful. This is not like, cause when I get a massage, I'm like light pressure, please. Oh, I go all in. I'm like, give me more pressure than you think you should give me. Felix and Oscar. I know, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's not the first thing that we have disagreed on in just this very <laughs> half hour. It's true. But this, it, it has now become like it works. It's fine, mm-hmm. but it's not super comfortable. I'm always in the search for the like perfect, comfortable chair. What, what about you're in like an office chair with like the lower back, right? I'm in a, just a armless sort of, it, it kind of feel, I don't know what kind of chair, like, I don't know the names. I should have done a little research on this and figured out the names of some of these styles of chair, but it's just a, it's just sort of a, a low slung chair with no arms, but it's plush. Standard office chair. Sort of, but I think of an office chair as like wheels. This, this doesn't have wheels. It's four legs. Hmm. Cause here's the thing. And the reason that I can't do an office chair in here. First of all, I like aesthetically, I like this style of chair for this room. And anytime I, because I, unlike you and your setup, I basically have one big central room where everything is and a gaming chair in the middle of that feels aesthetically out of place. Right. It would be like dropping Captain Kirk's seat into, you know, the Victorian era. It just sort of feels, feels incongruous. Yeah. Also the chairs. I don't feel stable. I don't feel as stable in an office chair that has the stem down the middle and then the sprawl of wheelie little low legs on the bottom. Octopus wheels. Octopus. That, that makes me feel unstable. This does sort of like, you can sort of, I'm like sort of moving around it. I assembled this chair myself. I stand Mm -hmm. by my craft work. It has not fallen apart. Okay. It has been sat on numerous times. You look at like the sitting, the butt robots that they have that test chairs. I have, are you that butt robot? I've, I'm the ultimate butt robot for this chair. How Lublin, ultimate butt robot. Ultimate butt robot. How do I play as this character? It won't light up. (laughs) I want better. What's the best chair you've ever sat in? Best chair I ever sat in was some bark lounge. Like I can't imagine anything not beating like a lounger where you can lean all the way back and put your feet up. Yeah. It's just the greatest chair that there is. I mean, (laughs) Are we, I don't know that we should necessarily just pick the chair that turns everyone into the humans from Wally. Oh. Like, <laughs> well, what is a chair? Like, what, what makes a chair the best chair, right? Like, there's some. That's that the thing. Are, That's what we got to figure it out. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a huge, if you were to hand a house over to me mm-hmm. and say, design it the way you want, mm-hmm. I would lean heavily towards mid century modern. Okay. I like that aesthetic. I like sure. sort of like the wood grain feels to it. I like modern versions of that. But by and large, I have found that a lot of mid-century modern chairs and sofas are not super comfortable. They're made for form over function. Just sure. the angles of it, how low it's built to the ground. Mm-hmm. So the thing that's the most pleasing to my eyes is the least pleasing to my body. Because I, I want a chair to be comfortable. I want it to, I don't want back issues sitting in mm-hmm. it. And sure. that can happen. I mean, you just have to sort of sit properly in a chair anyway. But, you know, a lot of those chairs just don't. They're, they're, it's like you're at a McDonald's, right? Or any fast food place where the chairs are uncomfortable. There's no comfortable seating in a fast food restaurant because they want to turn you over as quickly as possible to get more people in. Yeah. Do you think that that's the primary concern is being able to sit in a chair for a long period of time? To me, the, the perfect chair is the one that provides the most comfort. 
I don't want an okay. ugly chair. But I've sure. found, like, I, I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, there was this chair that, oh, it would turn you to stone if you looked at it. But sure, was it <laughs> comfortable when you sat down in it? Yeah. You know, there's no chair like that for me. But, you know, something like a lazy boy, it's not the prettiest chair in the world. But when I see it, it's like a light descends from the heavens and shines on it. Like a it's proper like, grandpa lazy yes. boy. Come to me. Come. Sit in. Do you like the digital version with all the different buttons on the side? Or do you like that classic one arm bandit slot machine? Crank that wooden uh, dowel and put your feet up. I do. I don't mind a hand crank. I do like fancy stuff. I have found yeah. that by and large, the automatic recliners take so long because you're used <laughs> to. Yeah. You know, there's the handle. But really, when you're a kid, you're not pulling the handle, right? Well, I always pulled pushing, the handle. You're pushing back to see if you can do it just with your pure strength. Oh, no, I was never doing it because my grandfather was the one that had the good lazy boy. Oh, we didn't okay. have a lazy boy in the living room growing up. So when I would go to my grandparents' either. place, that was where the good chair was. And if he wasn't in the room, I could sit in the good chair. But I had to yeah. treat the good chair with respect. That's true. But there is that feeling. You know, it's like friends. You pull the handle mm-hmm. and you get one level of comfort. Then you push back and it's like a whole new game. So, well, now is it two different maneuvers? Is it the handle brings up the footrest yeah. and then leaning back tilts the seat back? Yes, because you, it, a, this isn't a lazy really boy. Good. We're talking about the lazy boy, right? Yeah. Now. Or, or uh, yeah, this class of recliner, generally it's sure. lazy boy. There are a few different manufacturers of well, more than a few, but yeah, you pull the hand crank and that puts your feet up and puts you in, in a, in a semi state of recline enough that if you are watching television or having a conversation with someone, you can carry that on. Now, if you really want to lay down, if you've had a long day, mm-hmm. and sometimes you want to stretch out. I mean, I, I sit in this chair. I mean, I've been sitting in it now for whatever time it is, for almost 12 hours. I start work around 8. I jump in the chair. I'm going at it. I get up, you know, to use the restroom or to make food or to pick food up for, that has been dropped off at, at our front door. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I'm sitting and working. Yeah. So. Then I come in here and, and podcast with you for a couple hours and, and all of a sudden, boom, I'm here for a minute for almost 12 hours. By the end of that, I want to stretch out. So the chair being able to have that extra level mm-hmm. where you push back and you're almost laying flat is so nice. And it's, it's inviting to sleep. The, the issue with that becomes if your TV is too low, if you're watching TV, mm-hmm. then you're sort of looking down your body to see it. And that I don't like, but that's, <laughs> you can just put your TV higher. <laughs> that's fair. Let's talk about some other, and I realize that comfort and the ability to stay in it for a very long time is of paramount importance. Mm -hmm. I do think we need to look at some other chairs that for which that is not the primary function, but they have other benefits. Sure. And I'm, I'm talking about mostly stationary chairs now. Obviously, a mobility chair for someone with mobility issues is the number one chair. Sure. Because it keeps you moving. We're talking about stationary chairs right now. I would argue that there is a benefit to something like the folding chair, the classic metal folding chair, because what that can do is it can turn any room into a meeting, a theater, a concert, anything where space is an issue. Mm -hmm. And you need a storability of a folding chair and the ease of use of it. Folding chair becomes, for me, folding chair becomes a ladder, a short step ladder. (laughs) Any chair can be a step ladder. Folding chair becomes a low table. Folding chair can serve a lot of different functions. If you were in a room with multiple folding chairs and nothing else, I say this having been frequently in situations where we're in a holding room. So all of your assorted folding chairs become every possible version of furniture, much like we would do at Second City with the Bentwood chairs that we had there. I mean, those are, I love those, for, but that's a very special, that's a very spe- special relationship that both of us have. Yes, to one very specific both aesthetic, I'd say, I would argue that's one of the most beautiful chairs is those Second City style bent wood on the stage chairs. Sure. You know, it's it was so weird when we were doing the regular work juice improv shows and mm-hmm. hopefully we return to them sometime before uh, <laughs> before we're all dead. <laughs> in many Come years. on. I we'll mean, be- in many years. I will be doing them by March. Oh, you sweet summer child. It was a fun discovery when we were doing those shows at Dynasty Typewriter that they had the Bentwood chairs mm-hmm. that had belonged to I.O. West. I didn't realize it was I.O. West's actual Bentwood chairs. I thought that they had yeah. just. No, no kidding. They, I got there early and was, oh, I love that. I was like, these chairs look so familiar. 
to me. I didn't and know that they were, they were the, the IO ones. They were the chairs from from IO. They were either the Bentwood chairs or they were those weird like like the other kind. So folding chair. First of all, the folding chairs in holding are by and large terrible because it's sure. like cheap piping and then plastic on them. Mm-hmm. You're talking about like the good, not the, the good steel, pl- the metal. Yeah, that gray steel. Yeah, classic folding padded, chair. Sometimes yeah, they're not. Yeah, th- those are fine. If I'm going to have a convertible type of chair for a space, I'd rather be stacking those chairs that are in a oh, hotel. Okay. You would like a stackable chair rather than a foldable chair because they tend to be more plush. They're a lot mm-hmm. lighter than they seem like they're going to be, so they're easy to move around. You can stack a bunch of them up and move them that way, and they're very comfortable to sit in. Those are generally the chairs you'll sit in for a wedding or a sweet 16 yeah. or a bar slash bat mitzvah, but they also work well for sort of any purpose. You can use them. Yeah. Use them for anything. And they're more, they are more comfortable. So I think they serve the same purpose. I'm always going to come back to comfort in, in one way sure. or another. Like a, a nice ladder back chair is beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful furniture that I love to look at, but sitting in it for more than generally when I sit in those chairs, I'm not happy. With yeah. Them. Well, there are chairs that are designed to look cool and not necessary and that's that mid-century modern thing you were talking about mm-hmm. before you've got ball chairs you know the big white ball that there's like a recessed spot inside wishbone chairs not a fan of the wishbone chair that's the one with the single curved piece of wood around your back they're sort of rounded yeah. and oh, I hate those. thoroughly uncomfortable it looks like a short adult version of a high chair yes absolutely i know what you're talking about uh what about the director's chair while well, we're talking about foldy chairs so I, they're cool because they mean something. They mean like, oh, I'm, I am a star of the show. I am someone important on this show. Yeah. You pretend like you're a movie star every time you get in one, but they are not fun to put together. They're not fun to sit in for any extended period of time. Oh, see, that's, I disagree for me because I was obsessed with movies and acting from the time I was really little. That was the kind of chair I always wanted in my room. Of course. So that was just what I got used to was sitting in a director's chair. And oh, the first time, come on. I got, I had my name written on the back of that director's chair. It was amazing. Sure. And that was, by the way, that was not at work. That was when my mom had it done at happy names and they would do that thing where the they would do it with a paint pen with the dots. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> dots and they would connect, but I didn't care. It said it was blue and in red on the back, it said Mark. And I was like, that's right. I don't even need a last name. Everybody on, everybody on this set knows who I am. And by on this set, I mean in this bedroom, isn't that right? UHF weird owl poster. That's right, Mark. <laughs> so I always, and I also like the customizability of that sure. because you can slip the canvas on and off to wash it. Also easy to wash if you spill anything on it. And then you can have different canvases to put on it. I think that is, look, I don't think a folding chair has the comfort level that's going to be our winning chair. Mm-hmm. But I think that of the folding chairs, I think that the director's chair is the superior one. That's. I'll give you that. That's fine yeah. with me. I have no... I mean, I like a steel chair just because I'm a wrestling fan and it has been an important part of pro wrestling for a very long time. It doesn't need to be any more silver folding chairs, silver or blue (laughs) or black. Yeah. I have a collectible folding chair from a pay-per-view that I went to a few years ago. A collectible Uh, folding chair. I was in Philadelphia and Mm -hmm. my friend who had worked as a carpenter for WWE, I happened to be there the same time that a pay-per-view was happening. And mm-hmm. so I asked my friend if, if they'd be able to hook me up with the tickets and they were, and the tickets were maybe five rows away from the retaining wall. So I was like mm-hmm. right near, near there. And when you sit that close, your chair is a collectible steel folding chair that's padded that has graphics from the event on it. And you can keep it. Yeah. You take it with you. What? They give it. To I've you. never been an audience member at anything. When you left, you took your seat with what seat number are you in? Oh, I'm in a seat C3. Okay. So take seat three, C3 with you when you leave. <laughs> what? Cause they're not the chairs that come with the arena. They're not the Wells Fargo center chairs. Oh, those yeah. Normal ones, which I have sat in for since ever since that building opened, I've been sitting in their chairs. Yeah. I love that. Can I, by the way, you mentioned a uh, pay-per-view. I will tell you a ridiculous thing from when I was a little kid. Sure. When I first heard the phrase pay-per-view, uh, I did not read it. I heard it. And I thought that a pay-per-view event was an event you read about. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pay-per-view. Oh, we're not going to watch it on television. We're not going to television view this. No, 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 no. We're going to find out later with the pay-per-view. We're going to go to the 
the pay-per-view. Yeah. Let me check the pay-per-view. Russell, 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 Russell. <laughs> Hi, I'm Russell, 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 here with the pay-per-view report. That's right, Russell. Thanks for that. What about thrones? They're not comfortable. That's fair, but they have power. Eh, do they really? I mean, is it the chair that has the throne power or is it the, uh, does the person make the chair? Does the chair make the person? I guess that's true. Any chair can be a throne if you're the king, right? Or queen or any monarch. Yeah, although you're not allowed to sit in other thrones. So when Queen Elizabeth visited the set of Game of Thrones, she wasn't allowed to sit <laughs> in the, the, uh, the you couldn't sit iron, in the Iron Throne, in the Iron Throne because it was technically another throne. Like, okay. I didn't know that. I did not know that rule. She's not allowed to sit it. Even though they invited her, she was like, no, I cannot. All right, I'm just throwing out some wild cards now because we're narrowing it down a little. What about, uh, what about, uh, toilets? Do you count those as chairs? I love a toilet. You think it's no. a fun, do you think that is no, a functional a chair. chair? It's a chair that's with where plumbing. It's where you go pee pee and poo poo. All right. You don't do that in other chairs. Just like you don't sit down on the toilet for a meal. <laughs> Wait, normally, you don't? Normally, normally, normally. Look, if I'm having Taco Bell, I figure I might as well just start there. One stop shop. Exactly. <laughs> Can I have a Doritos Locos taco and one of those Japanese ones that shoots the water up there? Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. A beignet and a bidet. <laughs> oh, yay. Oh, keeping it French. What about a a deck chair? I hate deck chairs. And here's why. Well, you don't like the little clack, 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 no, that it's sits you upright. Right. And then when you're a kid, you have the ones that if it has the slats. Mm-hmm. It's going to catch your skin and that's not comfortable. Sure. And then when you get hair, it catches your hair. Mm-hmm. And then the, the ones that are like individual little bands of like rubberized plastic, same things, things get caught in there. Or you have the deck chair where it's wooden and it has like, it's like a director's chair. Somebody has like, like cartoons stretched it and morphed it into this deck chair. Those are hard to set up. And yeah. I think anything where you're low to the ground and it's tough to get up, that those are not like i i hate like not being able to get out of a chair that's fair especially i like the implied party of a deck chair though your deck chair it's like yeah man just throw a colorful towel down on me set a drink next to me and this i've never like i've never had a bad time on a deck chair (laughs) i get that i'm not not saying i've had a bad time in a deck chair yeah at all i just as a chair doesn't have what i want out of a chair what i need that's fair what about a uh, chaise lounge uh they're okay i've never been a big fan of the chaise lounge because you have to sit like cleopatra on it it's the only way you can yeah. sit comfortably on Fainting one of those couch yeah you also. can't sit upright it's like designed for a body to be in one specific loungy state yeah that's right all right i'm trying i'm just going through my uh going through my list of chairs here i gotta well, i'll tell you what let's take a quick break right now okay everybody stand up because it's Ooh. stand up stretch out you're going to hear from some of the other fine shows on the Max Fun Network. Maybe it's a thing or two from a sponsor. We can't predict the future, but we can predict that we'll be right back. So I guess we can. We'll be right We can back. predict the future. We Got This with Mark and Hal is brought to you in part by DoorDash. This past year has taught us to savor every moment together. So spend less time prepping and cooking and more time with the people you love with the help of DoorDash. Get what you want to eat right now, right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can also now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. So if you do want to cook late at night, go ahead and do it. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code we got this. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code we got this. Don't forget, that's code we got this, all one word, for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. And thank you, DoorDash, for sponsoring We Got This. I'm John Moe. My show, Depress Mode, is all about mental health. And this week, I talk with Amanda Knox. She spent four years in an Italian prison for a murder she didn't commit. That's a lot of trauma, and she's okay talking about it. If I touch on something that you'd rather not get into, just say so. We'll cut the whole exchange out. But it also seems like you're pretty open open about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am having trouble imagining anything that you could talk to me about. (laughs) I know. know. What are we going to throw Amanda Knox with? (laughs) 
Depression Mode with John Moe, only on Maximum Fun. For over a decade, MaxFunCon has been an incredible weekend of learning, connecting, and laughing with folks in the MaxFun community. And, if all goes according to plan, the last regularly scheduled MaxFunCon will take place in Lake Arrowhead from June 3rd to June 5th, 2022. We have a very limited number of tickets remaining. To make them available to the maximum number of people, we'll be opening our waitlist for tickets on January 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific. That'll be your chance to be first in line to purchase tickets, and we'll go down the waitlist until we're at capacity. More details at maxfuncon.com. And mark your calendars for Sunday, January 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific. We were right. Yeah, we were right back. Tell your sister. We How, what do right. you think about chairs shaped like stuff? You know, like the one that's baseball shaped glove. like a hand or the baseball glove or the one that's shaped like a big stiletto heel. I do love a chair that's shaped like a thing. I think that feels like Patrick Bateman's apartment. I like to get a chair that's shaped like a shoe and then I murder people in it. Like it's, you know, that's a very yeah. 80s. I remember being in New York City sometime in like the mid to late 80s mm-hmm. and seeing a store that just sold oversized stuff for your home. So Brilliant. if you want a giant tennis racket there, fine. You want to just look like chair. Josh Baskin's house. Exactly. Oh, I mean, well, no, even bigger, like actual bit, like, oh, do you want like a 12 foot pencil? That's oh, like wow. As big as a tree trunk in your house. No problem. Is that where they did all the shopping for the uh, prop masters for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Correct. That's that makes sense. Or where they sold off all the stuff that they made. <laughs> it's like the, it's a wrap, but for giant movie props. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> so that that was like a phase. I think that time has come and gone. Yeah. I'm not interested in that any more than I was. Do you remember? I think you were there for this. When we went to a famous comedian's house for a script reading, Mm -hmm. not named the comedian, and in their living room was a motorcycle. Do you remember that? No. Were you not there for that? I wasn't there. Oh, you were not there. No. Well, I was at that house and there was a motorcycle sitting there. I don't think it was for sitting. And he just uses it as a chair? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. I still don't know to this day. And I wasn't going to ask. Now, if you've got a stationary motorcycle... Just like put it on a treadmill. Right? Sure. Just have a motorcycle on a treadmill and then in your living room and then you're exercising. Motorized Peloton. Yeah, exactly. I think we have this figured out. Yeah. So motorized Peloton's the winner. You mentioned, yes, you mentioned low rise chairs. There's another chair that is, that serves one function. It is useful only at one point in time ever, but it is delightfully useful. And that is the, low to the ground picnic lawn chair, but the ground level one. It's the only kind of chair you're allowed to take to like open air screenings of movies and things. Right. So it's like you're sitting on like the fact that you're sitting on it is the thing that gives you back support. Exactly. The weight of your body is also providing you back support. And I have never felt richer. I don't own one of them, but a friend of mine gave me one when we were at went to a movie screening. I've never felt richer in my life uh, and more like one of the haves versus the have nots than looking around and going, I have one of these low slung sit up right big lots chairs. <laughs> Sucks to be you suckers just sitting on blankets out here watching the goonies in this cemetery. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. <laughs> Look at Mark Gagliardi in Hollywood forever sitting on the ground, but upright. That's right. On his big lots chair. Cost. Fifteen dollars. Let's leap now from a fifteen dollar chair to what I would argue based on what you described before. You know what? No, I'm not going to do that yet. First, I want to give a shout out because I think that you will find this one to be the official best chair. But I want to give a shout out to my personal favorite best chair. And that is a lounge chair, plush leather with the rivets. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Fancy. Yeah. A big fan and, and has like the rivets going around yeah. the, uh, around the armrests. Yeah. I want to feel like, place. yeah. I want to feel like I am in a Scottish mahogany library. Sure. That's my personal aesthetic favorite kind of chair. But I think based on what you were talking about earlier about the level of comfort, but also style, the form and function, I think we have to give this and it's a mid century modern classic. There's two very famous Eames chairs. Mm-hmm. The one Eames chair is that bucket, like, you know, sit at the desk or sit at the kitchen table, that functional. You've seen them everywhere your whole life. 
Mm -hmm. But the Herman Miller Eames lounge chair. Do you know the chair I'm talking about, Hal? Show me a picture. Yes, I do know this. I know this exact chair. I've seen yeah. it many play. It's often imitated, never quite duplicated. But yes, that Eames style where mm -hmm. there's like a wood trim on the side of it. Those seem very comfortable to me. Yeah, it seems like the the perfect version, aside from the fact that it has the stem and then the octopus uh, feet yeah. on it. Which actually gives it a much more stable base to work off of. Because when you lean mm -hmm. back in it, you are not leaning back as you would in a traditional chair on two of the legs. And all of a sudden creating an imbalance where you could, you could uh, go uh, too far. Your fulcrum, you could pass over your fulcrum too much and then wind up on the floor. In this one, you think? No, no, in a four legged chair. In so a four legged these, chair. Oh, I thought oh, you were talking. I see, base. I see what you're saying. Yeah. The, the, you want a heavier base like this. This makes it less likely to tip, even though it mm -hmm. might seem because there is a stem rather than four points connected to the ground. This is much more stable. Yeah. Uh, which is weird because it feels more, four legs feels more stable to me. Yeah. Which is, I guess, not true. But yeah, the Herman Miller Eames lounge chair. Yes. A real one will cost you between $6,500 and $8,000. Pass. There's a lot of knockoff versions for about, or about $1,500, 1000 to 1500 But it seems to tick off all the boxes. Are you reluctant to give it the go ahead as the best based on other preferences or just the fact that it is a $7,000 chair that not a lot of people can get? This feels hypocritical because we, for our best vehicle for dip, we picked a chip from a store that not everybody has access to. However, if you go to the store, the bag is two bucks. Yeah. As opposed to the knockoff version of this is a thousand dollars. You can spend, and I have spent three or 400 bucks. Yeah. To get a lazy boy with the handle that then fully extends that was so comfortable. And we only had one. Jennifer and I had one for a while. Then we moved to a smaller place and it came with us. And then in looking around at how stuff didn't fit, mm -hmm. it was the obvious thing that needed to go. Yeah. And it made the me second sad. recliner. You had your, well, you had your Joey and nope. Chandler chairs. No, it was the only recliner. Oh, the chair. only, I thought you said you had we two. We got of it them. because I had never had one and I always really wanted one. Gotcha. We found one that was on sale years and years and years ago and got it. And they came and then we moved here a little over eight years ago. It came with us, but then clearly it wasn't going to fit. Mm -hmm. The place was too small. So we got rid of it and it was a very sad day, but I hopefully one day we will have more space again and I will be able to maybe I'll get one. Yeah. I like that. Could be soon. Could be. We hope. We don't know. Let me ask you this then, Hal. Yes. Is part of this that you are nostalgic for the chair that you had to get rid of? Best chair. The best chair is that one that I had that left. No, the reason I wanted it so much is because of how darn comfortable it was. Yeah. And everybody wants to sit in the recliner. Sure. Oh, when Doesn't you're a kid, you don't, nobody wants to sit. What are you, a folding chair in the kids' table? No. You want the big plush chair. There was a reason that my grandfather, we were not allowed to sit in that chair. Right. It's not like he's going to come in the room and go, oh, I'll sit anywhere. Exactly. No, that's where he sits. That's the reserve for royalty. Yeah, exactly. That a royal butt goes there. A royal butt. Let me ask you this, Hal. Yeah. And I know that you mentioned before that you like a massage that's on the lighter side. Uh -huh. Did the sharper image perfect the recliner by adding the little controller and all the electronic doodads that massage you? Because I would tell you this, there is no other chair in the airport that is so coveted that it costs money to sit in. Sure. You actually have to pay to sit in that particular chair. And when I was a kid, we would go to the sharper image in the mall and my mom knew where to find us. Yeah. We would just go and sit in that chair for the 20 minutes that she was in JC Penny. Oh, there's nothing worse than going into the sharper image as an adult and going like that kid doesn't need to sit on that chair. Yeah. I'm, I have back pain. <laughs> I have foot pain. That kid doesn't have a care in the world. Yeah. I was the kid that was sitting in it going, now. listen to what <laughs> I sound like. <laughs> yeah. But also, if it has like the rolling and kneading mm -hmm. massage, which a lot of those chairs do, what is one of the first things that you have to do once you activate it? Put your back in the right spot. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like you put it in one spot and then you're good to go. You constantly have to readjust and move around. So you're doing part of the work, and that's why... These sound like first world problems, Hal. They, oh, my God. They're half world problems. <laughs> they are they are problems we couldn't even... From the magical land of Oz, from the Emerald City. It's those kind of problems. 
Yeah. However, we're at a point now where we have to split hairs yeah. to get where we need to go. And unfortunately, that one will split your hairs on your back if you get pinched in there wrong. <laughs> exactly. They'll pull them out. Like, that robot doesn't care about you. That robot Wait, is like, my job is to rub. And when it, it, it just goes at whatever, like, speed two, intensity four. Wait, the robot goes. in that isn't Scarlett Johansson from her? No. What? It's not. There's no I AI in you. there? Why do you think it never talks to you, Mark? Mine does. At the Sharper Image, when I was a kid, it would talk to me. That might have been an employee. <laughs> might have been an employee just ducking behind it. Excuse me. I would love it if you got up out of me because you've been <laughs> in me for 15 minutes. <laughs> and there's a 10-minute limit to sit on me and get massaged. Thank you. This is the chair and not Fred. <laughs> uh, I have that T-shirt. There's a 10-minute <laughs> limit to sit on me and get a massage. Oh, God. oh that, that was a terrible, that terrible like joke. I apologize. For that. It, it felt bad coming out. Goods, yeah, yeah. You also going to get your female body inspector hat marked uh, at the same store. Uh, exactly. Oh, I feel dirty. Yeah, filthy, filthy. That I did love the Big shots. Johnson shirts. That's oh uh, well, of course. Look, I grew up in the South in the nineties, man. When you're and I was, I was twelve in the nineties when Big Johnson shirts came out. Yeah, and I thought they were clever. Yeah, every 12-year-old boy at that age is like, misogyny is great. <laughs> yeah. We didn't know. Now we now we know better. No. We would never get those shirts. Yeah. And we would actively discourage people. Exactly. You know, because they're not funny. They're not even, I mean, like, it's not even punching down. It's just, like, why are you punching at all? But that's the problem with these misogyny Come on, shirts. Big Johnson's Lobster Piano Bar, because lobsters on your piano are better than crabs on your organ. Come Stop on, it. Hal. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> why do you remember? Why do you remember those? Ah, uh, they're so dumb. Anyway, what's the best chair? I would say it's the Lazy Boy recliner. I would say it's comfortable to sit in. Just if you don't even pull the lever, it's comfortable to sit in, especially when it is it a coveted like, chair. And I like the ones that can revolve. Mm-hmm. So it's got the revolving base. So you can turn and talk to people. So you're not out of the conversation. You can pull it up and put your feet yeah. up, which is good for circulation. And then if you really want to relax, if you want to take a little nap, you can push back even further. So it serves. Oh, it's it a napping chair. I forgot about the nap great element. Great napping chair. Great yeah. reclining and relaxing chair. Great sitting in conversation and being 100% comfortable chair. Okay. I'm going to put three more chairs up against it. I think Go you're ahead. right. I think you that this chair is. In any way, shape, or form, I would take every stool in the world and throw it into a wood chair. You don't like stools? No. Oh. Baby needs help with his back. <laughs> what am I supposed to hold my head up? Like a developing infant? I've Come on, man. That. Stool boom. From the, what is it? From the parlor to the pool room. <laughs> <laughs> no, the three that I'm going to throw at you okay. are, if, but I know what you're going to say, considering that you have uh, back issues and our chair is I going to be one issues. that takes- I'm not like walking around going, oh, my back, but you know, my back will hurt after a certain amount of time. Sure. Yeah. So these three probably aren't top of the list, okay. but let me just throw them out there since we haven't mentioned them. Sure. The giant bean bag. Yeah, they're okay. You really have to get them in the right shape. Yeah. You have to kind of work into them and good luck getting up out of them. You need somebody's help to get up out of them unless you want to turn over like a turtle <laughs> onto your hands and knees, <laughs> embarrassed in front of everybody, and then get up. Do you use when you get up from the lazy boy? Because I find if I'm super reclined in the lazy boy, it's hard to get up from that too. Do you try to pull the lever in the opposite direction extra fast so it kind of picks you up? Out of the chair? Oh, when I'm just in the recline, not when I'm pushed all the way back. Right, right. Because that you have to. Um, yeah, sometimes you'll you can use that's another good thing for getting up is yeah. you can use the motion of it along with the pull at the right time to go like whoop. All right, I'm up. What about the papazon? Which one's the papazon? Papazon looks like a giant flying saucer on a basket. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a big wicker giant round. Yeah. Yes, it looks like a huge contact lens. Yeah, no, I don't like those. Yeah, I don't know. Similar thing. Like, it's not. They're good at a party for more than one person. For like a bunch of people to sit and just talk to each other and be like, hey, how's it going? What are you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? This, this visual joke is working out really well for a podcast. <laughs> I'm retiring is what I'm saying. This is my last one. I can't do any more after this. Like, cause I've only, I've had you share a picture with me uh, and then I just did a visual bit that wasn't yeah. even any good. I thought it was great, Hal. Stop it. Don't wait. Do you mean you're done with all podcasts or just this one? Are you going to still do tights and fights? 
I'm going to be forced into retirement from just all podcasts. I'm not going to be allowed to do them anymore after this. But for tights and fights, you can immediately come out of retirement. Oh, my God. That's right. I reserve the right to return (laughs) from retirement in one week's time. All right. One more contender to battle against the lazy boy. Okay. The recliner. We call it a recliner. We need to use a proper name. We don't, they're not paying us. Yeah. The The great big medicine ball. No. Uh, here's what's great about a medicine ball or mm-hmm. you're talking about like an inflatable inflatable. Yeah. Not, a, not, not the, not the sand filled. I mean, the no, yeah. it forces you to sit upright. There's mm-hmm. another chair that does that. That is sort of a stool where you sit and then there's another pad right in front of it where you're, kneeling. Oh. So you're sort of like kneeling on it. You're kind of, I had one of those as a kid and I went right back to my director's chair immediately. Yeah. They're very good for ergonomic. It also reminds you of like, Oh, I don't work my core muscles enough. Yeah. I don't so need I'm that. Sit on this, and it, like the fun of the medicine ball is, you kind of bounce a little bit, and then you roll a little bit, and it's almost too. It's like too much. The chair's doing too much. Yeah, for the medicine ball. And if you start to go, you're done. You're on the floor. Yes. There's no recovery if you start to tip over on the big ball chair. This is true. As much fun as they are, and also they can lose air over time. Like you have to make sure they're properly inflated, and I just they're not. For me, I, I've always been afraid I'm going to pop them at any weight. So it's just a, another layer. But you know what's never going to pop? What's <laughs> what's that? You're the right. uh, the electronics inside a sharper image uh, massaging chair? They'll never pop. They are designed to kill slowly over time, eroding your muscles with each rub. <laughs> soon, soon it will be mine. Wait, what? oh no, it's this chair is talking to me again. I am the massage chair. Put your feet in me now. Wait, are you sure you're not? Feet. Are you sure you're not circulation? You're not Fred from Sharper Image? No, but there is a 10 minute time limit (laughs) because I have to close and get home. This is not Fred. (laughs) Uh, Hal, it sounds like we have our victor. Do you agree with it though? I feel like I've done something which I don't, I don't want to do all the time. I just, Hal Hal got this featuring Mark. But I do agree with me, I guess is what I'm saying. Or do I, I'm off well, I, you, you are, you are working off of your primary adjective for this, mm-hmm. which if I buy into that, the primary adjective of a chair is comfort. Yes. Then there's no question that this is it. Do you buy into so, that? Uh, I'm, I'm buying to it enough because I can't think of anything that beats comfort for an extended period of time. I don't spend most of my day sitting in a chair in front of a computer. So for people for whom that is a thing, the comfort is paramount. Yeah. So working off of comfort being the most important thing, I would still argue that if if it's just about purely functionality, I would say the classic metal folding chair is the the best one. Because of all the non-chair things. it can. Because of all the non-chair things it can do and its versatility and its storability or stackability. But I think if comfort is the number one thing, and I don't disagree that it should be, then I think that, yeah, there's no question a recliner is going to be the victor. We never talked about the rocking chair. Oh, a rocking chair is great. Rocking chairs are amazing. They're for sitting in front of Cracker Barrel. They are. They're not. They have the same problem. Like you have to put a pillow on them to be able to sit on them for a long time. Yeah. I do like you can't work in one except 50 percent of the time, you know, the time when you're forward. We have both had friends who have been pregnant in the time we've known them. Mm -hmm. So we've known them as they're putting together a nursery. Yeah. And part of the modern nursery is the glider chair. Yeah. Which is a super comfortable chair that glides. And that to me is the evolved version of the rocking chair. Like I have a there's a rocking chair in Philadelphia that. I don't know when my parents got it, but I remember it being around since I was very young and it is in the room that has my stuff in it. Mm -hmm. It's weird to call it my room. Yeah. But it is there. And I don't know, like I would one day love to have that chair in my home. I've seen that chair. This is your dad's house. Yes. Yes. I've seen that chair. Yeah. The wicker. It's I I think my mom had the exact same chair when I was a kid. It's that sort of dark oiled bent wood rocking chair with the wicker on the back and the seat. Absolutely. And the yes. curly Q arms. Yes. <laughs> Ken just jumped in the chat. Uh, everyone in the seventies did. Everybody. I guess had that, that was like 70s. officially that chair was bought in the seventies and a hundred percent, a hundred percent. It was, I think they had to have it re-wickered once uh-huh. it needed to be fixed once. Like somebody sure. broke it, but I love that chair. It's not the most comfortable. Like I like to be able to, to rock in it, but the modern glider to me is much more comfortable. Yeah. It has that same, there is a comfort to the rocking motion. 
Mm-hmm. I will grant you that a hundred percent. It feels good to be able to just sort of sit and rock and feel like you're going with the breeze. Or if you hear like the ocean nearby, you're going with, you develop a rhythm that's very calming and pleasing. But I'll say this. I think that the best seat mm-hmm. in a rocking chair is not the rocking chair. It's the lap. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. It's grandma's lap. Cushion. It's whoever you've crawled up onto when you're little. That's the best seat in a rocking chair. Sure. Yeah. So are we standing by? Uh, I stand by. I just don't think it can be beat. Yeah. I think it has it all. They rock. Generally, they swivel. They don't have the portability mm-hmm. and storability of a folding chair. But also, like, I wouldn't want the best chair to be the chair that's the best table. You know? <laughs> sure. I would. Is say- there a transformer? Is there like a proper transformer that turns into a chair? Come on. They have one that turns into a freaking toaster. I feel like it's going to be me. I feel like I'm. You're going to be the transform. You're going to. Yeah. Hal, if they start, if they do another round and they start doing voiceover auditions for uh, another round of Transformer shows. Yeah. I would love to have you play the Transformer that turns into a chair. (laughs) Instead of, uh, mine is just, (laughs) that's the sound of me turning into a recliner because Sam Witwicky, come sit down. Netflix is on recline on the all spark. (laughs) <laughs> we need you to recline me, pull the all spark lever and put your feet up and then lay back and take a nap. If you want to Sam Witwicky. I love that. You have to begin all Optimus prime impressions with Sam Witwicky. Sam Ken just pointed out in the chat that there was a transformer named super punch who turns into an electric chair, Not which is same. horrifying. <laughs> yeah. the oh, same. by the way, worst chair. That's an easy yes, episode. That is the worst electric worst percent. Yeah. Yes. No question. But the best chair, I'm comfortable with it, Hal. Of course. Because people of the world. Because everybody's comfortable with it. We've got to be comfortable with it. (laughs) When you walk into a room and you see a recliner, nobody lie. Don't cap, as the kids say. The first thing you think, if nobody's sitting in it, is, is it okay for me to sit in it? Can I sit in that? Am I going to get in trouble if I sit in that recliner? Because all I want in this world is the maximum comfort and luxuriation. Real word. TM. TM, TM, TM. Copyright, Mark and Al. And Ken. He was here too. Of the recliner. Three chairs in one. Regular comfy sitting chair. Check. Legs up. Re- re- relaxing in a slight recline. Check. Lay back all the way for a nap. Check. Does it swivel so you can talk to people? Check. Does it have a little pocket for your magazines? Maybe. What magazines are you reading? Good housekeeping? What, anything good in there? Any good recipes for me? I'm getting far afield. The recliner is the best chair asked and answered. Oh, Hal, doesn't that feel good to finish an episode, finish the people of the world moment at the end, and then just sit back Mm. and whatever you have to, because the chair you are sitting in is the one you have determined, as am I, the one that you've determined. This is the one that gets the prime spot in front of the computer. Yes. So. It's nice to sit in those. Yeah. I'm sorry you're not a recliner. I'm so sorry, chair I'm sitting in. Yeah. I know. We, for, these sir. chairs, do you think they hurt us? Oh, for sure. Oh. Now I got to buy this chair dinner. Mark doesn't love me. Oh, this is Fred. <laughs> oh, hey, Fred. Uh, this topic is closed, but there are many more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets or... Email us at we got this podcast at gmail.com or go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash we got this podcast and talk about your favorite chairs. Send us pictures of the chair that you own right now that you love the most. Let's just have a chair love fest and appreciate the things that help us out when we need to be off our feet for a little bit. Thank you to producer Ken Plume. If you enjoy podcasts and I know you do, you should listen to his a bit of a chat conversations and interviews with some of the most interesting and fascinating people by a wonderful, fascinating, and interesting person himself. You can listen to that wherever podcasts are available. Thank you also to researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. First of all, I wholeheartedly second that about a bit of a chat. Ken is delightful. Also, thanks to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world, with whom we would all like to curl up in a giant rocking chair, on a giant grandma's lap with you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We got this. We got this. MaximumFun.org. 
Comedy and culture. Artist owned, audience supported.